Hi everyone. Welcome to the second part of section 5.6 on area between curves. This is after the first portion that we did together in lecture, which was about definite integral substitutions and using symmetry to give us some shortcuts in finding definite integrals. So here we're going to look at the area between curves, which also uses definite integrals. All right. So first thing we're going to look at is how to set up this formula and we're going to make a little sketch to help us see what's going on here. Okay. So we want to sketch ourselves some axes. Okay, just standard x, y axes. And then we want to put two curves on there so we can find the area between them. So draw yourself some curves. There's one of my curves and here is the other one. So these are two different functions here. All right. And we're going to say that we want to find the area that's trapped between these two curves. And we could do this in a more general sense, or we could do a specified interval which I'm going to do this on the interval from A to B. Okay, so the area that we're going to be looking for is this part right in here. Okay, and we're going to find this area um, by well, we're going to set it up like a Riemann sum at first, but you know where that leads. A Riemann sum is going to take us to an integral. So we're going to first think of this as a general area being the sum of the area of a bunch of little rectangles in that region. Okay, so this is the sum of the area of n rectangles and then of course we're going to let that number of rectangles in go off to infinity that's how we get the exact area there so we'll, we'll in, include that component as well all right but let's take a look at just one little rectangle so we can see what these sample areas would look like. All right, so here's one little rectangle. All right, let me sketch one in here for us. Okay, we'll make it pretty thin. All right, because you know when we get up to an infinite number of rectangles, these are going to be very, very thin rectangles indeed. Okay, so the area of this rectangle, I'll call that A sub R for rectangle, is of course going to be the height times the width. Okay. And the width we can think of in the same way that we have been during our Riemann sum processes. The width is just going to be some little change in the x direction here. So there's our width. We'll call that a little delta x. So it's the height times delta x. Okay. But now we have to think about the height of that rectangle. All right. So Let's see here. If we distinguish between our two functions, we can see that one of the functions, the green one here in my case, is on the, on the top in this region that we're looking at. So I'm going to call that y sub t for top. And then you can probably guess the purple function there that is on the bottom. It's less than yt in our region. I'm going to call that y sub b for bottom function. Okay, so if we want the height of our rectangle, 
we could find that by finding the difference between the two y values, one from y top and then the other from y bottom. And so the height is just going to be yt minus yb for whatever those y values are on that particular rectangle. Okay, so we're just going to keep it very generic like that yt minus yb times delta x. So there's our height times our width. So that's just for one little rectangle there. And so for our full area, we're going to add up, you know, an infinite number of those little rectangles. So full area. A is going to be the limit as our number of rectangles in goes to infinity. And you know it's going to be a Riemann sum. All right, so the Riemann sum summation from k equals 1 to n. And then we're going to put in our areas of the rectangles. yt minus yb delta x. OK. So. When we evaluate that limit, you know, this is our Riemann sum process, taking the limit of that Riemann sum. We know this leads to an integral of the function inside the Riemann sum. So our area, we aren't going to go through the full Riemann sum process to do this, by the way, guys. Um, we know how to do integrals in general now, so we're just going to turn it into an integral. Okay, so our area between the two curves is going to be the integral from A to B of yt minus yb, our function from inside the Riemann sum there. And then when we move from the Riemann sum to the integral notation, that delta x becomes our dx inside the integral there. Okay. And so this is a formula to find the area between two curves. You identify which function is on the top, which function is on the bottom, subtract those two, and put it inside an integral. All right. Now one thing to note here, um, kind of graphically, another way to think about this, is that since we are doing subtraction inside of that integral, we know there's an integral property that deals with subtraction. This is equivalent to um, if we subtracted those two integrals with the two different functions inside them separately. So if we took integral from a to b of y sub t dx, and then we subtracted the integral from a to b of y sub b dx. So integrating your top function and then subtract the integral of your bottom function. All right. Because um, notice what those integrals represent. All right. The definite integral from a to b of a function, um, as long as it's a, a positive function like we're looking at here, it's just the area underneath that function, between the function and the x-axis. So this right here is representing the area under our top curve in the picture. And then this second integral is representing the area under the bottom curve in our picture. Okay. So you can think of that, let me do another little sketch here with our two functions. Um, I'm going to try and reproduce these, uh, these two functions that I graphed earlier as well as I can. Uh, there's yt and then there's yb. All right. So if we were looking at the area under the top curve on our interval, a to b, that would be this green area that I'll 
I'll shade in right here. So we're subtract or we're taking that area under the top curve and we are subtracting off the area under the bottom curve. That would be this purple area right here. Okay, so we found that full green area and then we subtracted off the purple portion. That leaves us with just the area that we're looking for. Hey, right here. That's the area that's actually trapped between the curves. So yeah, that's another reason why using this subtraction makes some kind of sense. Um, if you look at it area-wise, or if you look at it in terms of the height of a, a single rectangle in that region, um, both are good. So this right here is the formula that we're going to be working with for now.